Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. It's Monday, that means it's Movie Monday, and today we're talking about Avengers Infinity War. That's right, everybody. Movie Monday, we're going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is... Jelani Buller. This is... I'm Brooks. And we have been doing this all year long, building up to Infinity War, one MCU movie a week on Monday, talking about it, dissecting it. We've had so much fun doing it. We finally reached Infinity War. It is here. Did it live up to the hype? Was it good? Did it leave us satisfied? What do we feel about this movie here on Movie Monday? I want to know. So, I loved this movie. I thought it was great. It was fantastic. It was seriously a fantastic culmination of 10 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Like, it's just, it was so fun. It was great. And I'm going to warn everybody from this point forward... There is spoilers to be heard from this video. We're going to spoil this video. We're going to talk about the movie. We're going to we're going to we're going to talk about it. So if you haven't seen the movie, you don't want to spoil. Don't watch this movie. I mean this video. But I love the movie. I thought it was great. It really took a bunch of different characters and they, and they had to juggle them all around together. And I thought it did it really really well. But ultimately, this is a Thanos movie. This movie's about Thanos and he's the main character. It's his story. It's his arc. It's his journey. His quest. And the movie just. It just it just captured it perfectly. I think it captured the 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 character of Thanos, how badass Thanos is, um, the dire situation that the Avengers are in. This movie did such a phenomenal job to me, to the point where like at every moment in this movie, I was worried for almost every character. And when when at the end with Tony Stark, I started getting tight in my chest because I was like. I thought Tony Stark was about to go, and I seriously was like, I'm not ready for this. I am not emotionally ready to let go of Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark in my life. And it was just, the stakes felt so high. I was so worried about the vision. This was the best movie with the vision in Scarlet Witch yet. Mm -hmm. This was the best Doctor Strange performance by Benedict Cumberbatch. Seriously, his accent problems that we all had, gone. Gone mm -hmm. in this movie. The way that he, they show magic, it worked. It was fun. It was spectacle. It was big. It was explosive. All the characters ring true to me, even in the little tiny bits. It's also very, very funny, and rightly so, because if it was not a funny movie, that would have been the most depressing two and a half hours I spent at the movies, because seriously, it is just the Avengers losing battle <laughs> after battle after battle. So, Jelani, what did you think Good. about Infinity War? Infinity War, to me, changed the way I watch cinema. That's how beautiful this movie was. It made so much sense to, on every aspect of story. And you show like characters like the Hulk, who's like, he doesn't come back for most of the movie. You don't know where the Hulk went. Because the Hulk is too scared, yeah, he's scared after what happens to him Hulk's and scared. Thanos destroyed him. Yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about in this movie. This is the first time the Hulk it's had all to go up against up something, against like, something that. like that. Just walk up to something and fight Thanos. And a guy who like will jump right into the face of a giant fire monster. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't well, care. He like, you know he got trouble in. Doesn't care and goes in and gets his ass handed to him by Thanos. I mean, handed. And I've never seen a like a whoop down, and this is just the beginning. This <laughs> shit ain't even started yet. It was so good on so many levels. Like you get like the story with Gamora. Oh, yeah. And her love of Thanos. Uh, like, and he, what uh, he had to do to get the soul stone was to kill something that he loved. And he started crying. And by the way, the way he they find that planet. And who's on that planet? Yeah, Red Skull. <laughs> Red Skull! But not Hugo Weaving. He was, no, he no was like, no, I won't touch this. <laughs> so, that was a nice little surprise. Be like, yeah, yeah guys, we good. know. Red Skull's still there. Red Skull's still yeah, there. Surprise. And little, a little like... But little nuances. Yeah. Little just the, the, the way that story blends in this this father and daughter relationship. And it's the whole movie. Yeah, that's the... And yeah. it's really... in it. And his smile at the end kind of mm. does it too because the way he, what he does, is comic book gold. Yeah, it's 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 layered like the Ultimate Universe. Like initially, with uh, who who were the writers for the Ultimates? 
That was Mark that was Miller. Mark Miller and uh, and the artist was Brian Hitch. Brian Hitch. That's right. They made the template for what this Marvel universe is. Like they had Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> as Nick Fury in the Ultimates in World, and they put him in. Yeah. And it it that's Ultimate Spider Man. Yeah. That's ult. Um, there are a lot of Ultimate feelings oh, about yeah. this and. How they kill off everyone. All right. Of course, this movie is based on Jim Starlin and George Perez and Ron Lamb's classic, The Infinity Gauntlet, which came out back in the early 90s. I think it's a great adaptation. It has some moments that directly come from that comic book. And with a snap oh. of his fingers. Brooks, magnificent you are. What did you think about this movie? Did it build up? We've been, we've been doing this for weeks, guys, and this has been so much fun. Um... Did this movie, did it live up to the hype? Mm, subpar, I think. <laughs> subpar. Oh, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Of course uh, you're kidding. It was a great movie. I loved it. I mean, it was like, from the from the opening scene to the last scene, yeah. like I had to get up to use the bathroom. I'm like, ah. I, didn't want <laughs> I to remember that, yeah. I was like, up. oh man, I gotta like. I was I like, to, I bet Brooks has to go really bad. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I would have toughed it out otherwise. But like, <laughs> uh, I just ruined the rest of the movie. But uh, yeah, this was a great movie. It seemed kind of like a, a combination of the stories. Thanos Quest and the Infinity Gauntlet kind yeah. of merged together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it is the Avengers basically losing. <laughs> Constantly. The time. Like, they're barely keeping together. And they're already <laughs> split apart. So uh, it makes it know, worse. Tony Stark's like, I don't want to call Captain America... So like Bruce Banner has to do it, and uh, there's a lot of you know every there's a lot of they're split up. Like, yeah. There's a group over here doing this, and a group over here doing that, and and the Thanos' forces stories. are split up. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I love how that it, it all it's easy to follow, and, yeah. and it goes from Earth to it to nowhere. Where like, yeah, and like and not as obnoxious as Civil War did with the giant titles. Right. You know, yeah. a nice subtler title, yeah. but. Yeah, love. So you liked it. We seemed like we yeah, all. Yeah, we all love this movie. Man. Love this movie. I thought it was such a oh. great film. It was a very dark tone, yeah. especially with the way it ended. And we know there'll be a lot of crying. We kids. know that. Yeah, a yeah, a lot of crying. Now kids. we know that that a lot of this stuff is going to be kind of undone and unwound, and probably by the end of the next film, mostly the people being you know turned into dust at the end. But let's talk about the big daddy of them all. First of all, first and foremost, Thanos. Josh Brolin mm -hmm. doing the voice acting, a brilliant CG performance. Oh, yeah. Seriously, nuanced, yeah. subtle, a lot of a lot of subtlety mm -hmm. in those scenes. You were talking about the one with Gamora. I loved Thanos in this movie. I really think that they captured the essence of who Thanos is in the comics and what he has become in the public nerd consciousness. Yep. Right? And and Brolin's voice, it's the the awesome. CG, it all just blended together to make this really great performance that is something unique in film and i thought it was a, a real achievement for the technical yes. aspect of film for as well yeah absolutely. absolutely but i love the story there and thanos is a bad guy but he's a bad guy he's, that, he's with, got a purpose he's got a purpose and his purpose and is still very evil and simple like i want to yeah, kill, half, kill the universe, half the universe which that's what he did in the comic book now it's in the comic book it's it's because different. he wants death yeah. he's a boner for death yeah no. <laughs> whatever and all that but i really felt that they com they caught the complexity of the character because even in the comics over time mm -hmm. you learn that thanos is a much more yeah. complex character than just Layers. The mustache twirling villain like we've had in a the several best villain of these we've movies. had. So talk, okay, tell what did you think about Thanos? Thanos is the best villain we've had, but ever. Okay. The fact that the entire movie is about him, yeah, that makes it perfect, and his character like actually transcends villains. Like he's a villain. He's he's a he's a father, and he he treats her or treats well his children the same. Well, well, he's, he's, he's kind of kinda... shits on Nebula. Yeah, yeah. no, Neb. Well, I think he loves Nebula in his own torturous way. I mean, all of his children. That was he a very kind of Infinity words. Gauntlet moment too. When he, yeah. you know, she's in that field, it's kind of like you know, when, in the comic when he had her in that state of between life and death. Oh yeah, she's all burnt up and yeah. all that. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Man, it was rough. Nebula's alive, by the way, because if you read the book and if they're going along a little bit of this route, Nebula's going to be very key to stopping Thanos. Right. I don't know if they're going to go she's that still alive, so. But she's still alive, so I think she's going to have a purpose. But Thanos, to you, the best. The MCU best. The, the, ever. 
Okay. Ever. Absolutely. You can what say you that now. I can say well, that now. I, I loved it. I loved Thanos in this movie. You know, all the build up towards him, it it, it paid off. Yep. Because he's he's just great. I mean, I love the the way his voice is. Like he's just so calm. Like nothing phases him throughout this movie. Like he gets a, he gets an axe. Thor puts an axe in his chest. <laughs> and he's like, you should have gone for the head. Oh. And uh, I mean, he's just he's so he's so powerful. Yeah. And that, you know that's what Thanos is. Like he has one gem, and he's he's just tearing through everybody. And just one at a time, he just puts each one in the gauntlet. Oh, I so, love I love that too. And I mean, it's it's like how it else could this cry. movie go, and how else could this movie end? This mm -hmm. you know now all the marketing, and they're like originally they're like this is Infinity War Part One. Then they're like, oh no, this is its own complete movie. Which obviously this is Part One of something, mm -hmm. right? It's gonna be concluded in next year's Avengers Four, whatever that's gonna be called. But I really think that they just wanted this to sit with people for a while because this that's... This is Empire! Like, I've been waiting. We've been talking throughout this whole MCU rewatch, but I've been waiting for them to so do good. a real serious, like, high stakes, let's take this serious movie. Mm -hmm. I think they finally did it. Yeah. And I know this movie's got a lot of funny it's, it in it. It still had a lot of good humor in it. Yeah, it did. And it, it did. had to. It, yeah. need, it needed it. I mean, seriously, it the moment the Guardians show up, it got so funny. It was funny. So quick. Drax, once again, so funny. I love the Guardians of the Galaxy. We, Russell we love Brothers them. nailed it. Like, and they, they were just fantastic. Yeah. And James Gunn had James a lot of Gunn involvement there. Yeah. From the moment that they're listening to Rubber Band Man. Yes. Right? Uh, their banter. Drax with his, like, I'm moving. My movements are imper <laughs> imperceptible. <laughs> And just I like, oh, I like the Rocket Raccoon and Winter Soldier thing. Then I'm gonna get that arm. Yeah, I'm gonna get that arm. So the Guardians were spot on. All the characterizations they fit. Tony was there, and Tony is like, yeah. this is that Tony that we saw in Iron Man three. Yeah, that was like losing it. He is now so paranoid about what's coming that he's got this stuff now built in and ready at any moment. He's Iron Man. Yeah. He's ready. And I just I just thought all the characters. Steve, I was kind of disappointed a little bit that Steve didn't have more umph to this role, but I think that's coming yeah. in the next movie. Yeah, I think yeah. Obviously, yeah. that's all set up. The Secret yeah. Avengers, though, I love that whole thing. Black Widow, Falcon, the yeah. Black Order, all that stuff. So yeah, we talked it's about cool. Thanos. Let's talk about the Black Order real quick. They were created by Jonathan Hickman for the Infinity Event. These were the uh, the generals of Thanos' army. If you remember, there's Corvius Glaive, the guy with Prox the, the Prox 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 Midnight, Ebony Maw, Ebony Maw, Ebony Maw Ebony and Maw, Black and Dwarf. Black Dwarf. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's another one, Super Giant from the comic books that they yeah. didn't use. Mm -hmm. I liked them a lot. They're obviously just glorified henchmen in the movie because it didn't really have at two and a yeah. half hours yeah. already. Yeah, you're not and gonna I think Proxima Midnight blitz. probably got the most screen time. Yeah, yeah, I was a little disappointed that Corp uh, Corvius Glaive didn't have, I didn't really feel like he was the leader like he was in the books, yeah. but Ebony Maw Ebony was Ma got spot on. He was probably on. Him, him and uh, oh, Proxima Midnight. He was yeah. spot on. Would you like the Black Order? I love the Black Order. That's a good set of villains. And, and each with their own powers each with their own like motivations, but they're all there to get those Infinity Stones. It, yeah. it, it's so epic how they get together, and even even in the split parts where they're the villains are on um, the ship, or Corbius Glaive is on the ship. Yeah, and Spider Man has a way to stop it. He's like, remember that old movie, Aliens? Oh, that's Ebony Ma on the ship. Ebony Ma, yeah, 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 it's Ebony Ma. Absolutely, I yeah. can't remember their names. Remember that old yeah. movie, Aliens? Yeah, yeah I that love was that. awesome. Great reference. So. Man. There's enough pop culture references from you. Oh, another funny part. It was part. so explosive. Another love... super funny part is when uh, he's like, you mean like Kevin Bacon and Footloose? Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Is that still the greatest movie, movie ever? Dude, it never was. <laughs> what about you? Did you like, you like the Black Order? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I didn't very much. I, uh, yeah, I, I, Ebony Maul was so perfect. The yeah. whole well, rejoice. Rejoice! Strange. Oh, yes. And then the whole rejoice, you have the pleasure of dying for Lord yeah. Thanos. Oh. It's like the oh. zealots. Yeah. Oh, and his voice is like, it's like this like snake oil... Salesman, like, yeah. salesman, like just kind of, yeah. oh, and it just worked and it was creepy and it was such an homage to the Infinity that's event gorgeous, that Jonathan Hickman man. did and I loved it. That big battle at Wakanda, that stuff's amazing. So let's talk about these Avengers first. Now, first thing I want to talk about is this movie, what, okay, the Ragnarok stuff that we were talking about. Oh, basically. it starts with it. The first time I watched Ragnarok, I didn't really like it that much, but I liked it a lot more. This movie makes Ragnarok like such <laughs> a no sad. It's they horrible. Sad. Lord, I think they killed it's, Korra I the think, Valkyrie. Yeah, I think I'm they're not sure. Yeah, Valkyrie's gone. You've never we, seen them. We've never seen them. They can still be them. there. But Thor Ragnarok, for as 
dark as some of the stuff that happened. It was a very light movie, right? And it had yeah. a very hopeful ending that yeah. just gets destroyed yes, over. in the beginning of this movie. Obviously, this is when we lose Heimdall and Loki. I want to wonder how much they had to pay Idris Elba to sit in rubble for a couple hours one day. Yeah. I mean, but didn't I, want to do I it hated to see Heimdall, yeah. Heimdall go. I was expecting Loki to go. Yeah. But dudes, has Thor not had the worst week of anybody <laughs> like ever? Anyone. Seriously, His but dude, Thor, 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 made, but that, it made like you know when he comes back with the axe and you know uh, there's like oh you guys are screwed now. Oh dude, how they make like, the axe! Yeah. I loved oh, Thor. Back man, when Thor came back, I was like Thor. Yes. Yes. Let's talk about Thor's arc. Yeah, what do you like about Thor? In this oh, movie? I loved, I loved, I loved uh, everything about the Thor arc because he's like so low in the beginning of this movie. Yeah, he's like he's, he's, he's powerless against Thanos. Thanos just beats his ass, yeah. and then like he runs across the Guardians. Of course, he ends up. He ends up with Rocket Raccoon of all people. <laughs> he mistakes him for the he sta- he mistakes the him for the captain of the Guardian. He, he calls him Rabbit, and it it does, it it, uh, it kind of uh, ties up the whole Rocket Raccoon uh, having an obsession with stealing body parts. Yeah. Too. And he's like, here, take this eye. I would have watched that first. Yeah. Thor just pops it in. And does great, and then of course you had the re- uh, revelation that Peter Dinklage was actually playing. Uh, a dwarf the, that's a giant. The dwarf. Yeah, the, yeah. the giant dwarf that, that made Mjolnir. Yeah. I can't remember the character's I can't name right now. Either, Someone to eat. The fact Peter Dinklage is in it. It was a I'm dwarf. So name, so. But it's so a great scene. It and up, even it's so awesome. Yeah, it's a great scene when he yeah. had to forge it. He had to open that up. And, yeah. then, and, and his like, hands and like, like, like hands uses his arm to make the handle for the Stormbreaker. He makes Stormbreaker with his own arm. That's Beta Ray Bill's hammer eventually, right? Oh, man. I loved it. I thought it was great. And I loved the moment. When Peter Dinklage is like the power of that star going through even your body, you know it will kill you. And he like then I'll die. And he's like, yes, that's <laughs> what that what means. means. Yeah. Do you like what do you think about Thor in this movie? Man? I love oh, and at Thor. the end when he yeah. shows up and he's yeah. just like, dude, what? He comes back. The best arc. I, mean, I think Thor may have the best arc, but so many arcs are in this movie. Yeah, it completes so many stories. He does, and he's he's. Yeah, like you said, battered, bruised, defeated. And then all of a sudden, he just comes back. And he is a god. Well, you know, an alien. But an alien god yeah. <laughs> that can withstand, like, large amounts of sunlight that can kill you. Still gets his hand about to him about Thanos. But it, it humbles him. Yeah. And it makes him... Thor's more always getting humbled. He too. is. But that's a learning thing. And he even tells his age. He was like, he was 1,500 years 1500, old. 1,500, yeah. So he's fifteen hundred years old. Brother, you truly and, are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I love when he when he's so cool. like, I told you I was going to kill you for that. Yes. <laughs> oh man, it was like so a great many moments, man. And we're like, well, this is it. This is this is how they're gonna no. And it's still on. I, I had a feeling like we could talk uh, about this movie for hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's, now, it's, another okay. Let's talk about Tony then, all right. because this is a this, this is a good arc for the him. The MCU has definitely been. Tony story more than almost any other mm-hmm. characters, and it He's, does kind of where, is. where it started was with the with exactly. Iron Man. And dude, Tony is just like manic in this movie, and then like he's just he's so overwhelmed. I love that he's like un, un unknowingly partnered up with Spider Man. Right. He's like he's and, got a babysit Spider Man, oh, and he goes to save Doctor Strange. Him and Doctor Strange got a great dynamic yeah. going oh, on yeah. there. I I love Tony. They hate each other. I loved. Yeah. I like the armor, but because the armor is the nanotechnology, it's mm-hmm. the modular thing, like his new comic book suit, where he can like it, it, create like, it creates and, different things and stuff. Yeah. It felt it, because it was so CG and so sleek looking because of the nanotechnology. It, it didn't look as practical and real yeah. as the Iron Man armor typically but his, does. But his armor has been evolving yes. this entire time, and so I do like I mean, that because that's so in, it makes sense. That's inherent. The Iron Spider right. armor was really cool. The Iron Spider, was yeah, great man. Oh, I love man, that. I love when the, the, the legs pop out of the yeah. back. To like catch him. Oh. It's so great. clean. You know, technically, I just thought about latching on and yeah, then did it. Like, yeah, technically, it this is your fault. fault. Yeah. <laughs> but Peter, Spidey, and Doctor Strange, that was a great little it's story great that was going on. Yeah. I loved how even the Guardians wound up split amongst the others. Right. When the Guardians run into Tony and Doctor Strange and all that, that's mm-hmm. a fun little scene. Mm-hmm. Who is your master? What am I supposed to say? Jesus? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just so fun. Um, but this, the, the Tony, does he learn? Does he grow? Is this... Is this, this finally is his, the arc you want to This see? is his arc. This is finally what I... Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's been broken, defeated with just losing the Avengers. Like, the Avengers split up over an accord that they didn't really need. Yeah. And because they were split for this long, they didn't even try to prepare for what was happening. And it happened. 
I, I think it would have made a difference. Though. It would Even if the Avengers would. had been together, they it probably would. still would have got their asses kicked. Oh, yes. Yeah. All at once. And you know split apart. One one scene, and I, we won't talk about it yet because you haven't mentioned those characters, but one scene, like where they had him, he was doing Oh, yeah. Well, let's talk about let's that talk scene. Let's talk about it. They do have that scene because we got the Guardians involved, and I love this whole Guardians argument. By the way, Star-Lord's the worst because he ruins everything. Everything. Yeah. They Everything. have him. Just, they have him. They have Thanos down. They almost got that gauntlet off, and of course, Star Lord ruins it all, basically. By yeah, asking he, he, about that what happens to he, he tends to you know be more emotional. He does, and it, it's, 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 it's exactly I think how he's, he's not a seasoned hero person. And well, it's also no. exactly how the character I think would react yeah. in yeah. that situation. Absolutely. Um, I also, man, I, I thought Drax was gone the moment Thanos yeah. turned him into like bricks, and <laughs> then I thought they were done. I thought they were done. Yeah, I did too. I really did. Uh, like, this entire movie it just made me feel worried for all these people. Mostly the Vision, especially in every scene the Vision or Scarlet Witch was in. This was, their, stone his this head. was their best arc to me, and I it loved it. Gorgeous. This was really, That's the romance you want. It's the romance it's you want, romance. but it also really shows you the character of the Vision right. and the Scarlet Witch. And I really like that they were spotlighted, and seriously, from the beginning, when, when, when Corvius Glaive and Proxima Midnight show up yeah. the first time, I'm like, this is it, man. I'm like... Yeah. He's oh, this whole time. Do you like the Vision stuff, man? Yeah, I, I did like the Vision stuff. I mean, I liked everything. I yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The Vision definitely got his chance to shine in this movie. And dude, Everyone how sad. had their chance to Scarlet shine. Scarlet Witch has to kill Vision. Yep. But it's no use because Thanos has the time stone. stone. Oh. Yeah, I know. Just mix it back. And when he rips that stone out, now you notice Vision went all gray and lifeless. Right. When they bring him back, which they will... Because Shiri was working on that, and that was a great connection yeah. of why oh, they yeah. needed to go to Wakanda. They knock her out, and they never, you never see her again. Yeah, and we don't know if she dissipated or not. But Vision, when he comes back, will be emotionless and yeah. not have his memories. Mm -hmm. And it will be like that art from back in the John Byrne John days, Byrne. I believe. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting to set that up. I really like that as little that Scarlet Witch and Vision have had in the three movies that they've been yeah. in, it's one complete art. It's one yeah. whole story, and you, you evolve with them, and I love those characters because mm -hmm. you like Vision and Scarlet Witch in this movie. I love them. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, once again, that is the romance I want to see Yeah. in these films. Like, okay. you, you were kind of right, and they did play back on um, the other romance that they had. Uh, we'll talk about that, too, but... You're talking about the I Hulk thing? the Hulk and oh, yeah. Black Widow. Awkward. Yeah. This is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> And they made it awkward, and it, it was over. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they addressed. So, I like that. I loved how those two characters were in Scotland hiding, as far as uh, how it develops. He, he's found a way to turn himself human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he may, he, he's a vision. He's an android, and how they interact with each other. I loved it. it. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I got I don't you. How to explain it, man. Let's tell you. You were mentioning Hulk real quick, so let's talk about Hulk. I love it because Hulk gets smashed. At the Just very, very beginning. beginning. And the Hulk is now scared and won't come out. So now Banner has to get the spotlight. Right. And I like it. It's a great spotlight. He was great in the, in the movie. He was there for exposition. to help them realize that Thanos was coming. This movie from the very beginning just felt oh, grave and tense. And just like, this is the worst case scenario at all moments. And That's why all the movies were jokey. Yeah, and Hulk, yeah, and <laughs> Hulk, Hulk not coming out really added to that effect. Right. And I loved him in this movie. I loved him in the Hulkbuster armor and the Wakandan battle. Um, that's another great Damn, part. Oh, the Wakandan battle. Uh, another, oh. another thing, really great thing, is how uh, Thanos uses the Infinity Gauntlet in his fights. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like he, he he's very create. They're very creative with these fight scenes, like him teleporting the meteorites in. Yeah, to yeah. Him, like, and you down. pay attention to the gauntlet. And yeah, the he uses, he uses like, all the gems the way that. That it should, should be, be used. It's like he's an expert. Like he knows exactly what he's doing. It's like I use he's the power stone train. to beat up the Hulk. The whole quest, yeah. the whole quest gorgeous. to get him, yeah. and then the ultimate getting the final one, the soul stone bit, mm -hmm. um, killing Gamora, everything. Uh, Peter's reaction to that, all the Guardian <sighs> stuff, Cap and the Secret Avengers. They didn't really have much to do, but they were there. And there they would be a lot ass. more. They sure did. They held up. They were ready. They've been, Ooh, they, you know, that fight scene. Sam. Sam, Nat, and Steve have been avenging this whole time. Oh. Oh. You know, I love a little bit of the Thunderbolt Ross in there. Yeah, man. Loved a little bit of War Machine in there. Yeah. That was great to see War Machine. You notice that big money shot though from the trailer where they're all like running in battle. Yeah, and the Hulk's you don't with see them? it. That's not in there. It's not in there. I wonder if that was made just for the trailer because the Hulk's yeah. in there and all that the stuff. Yeah, total yeah. mislead. Huge. Um, Spider-Man's great in this movie. Yeah. 
Again, Doctor Strange is great. Like I said, this Everyone is my favorite is bit of Doctor Strange. Everything is so good. Everything he gets a lot perfect. more time. He gets a lot of time in this. He trip. does, and I think that was really two and a half well. hours. Yeah. And it, I, it could have like been another been hour long, and yeah, I would have been fine. I'd be okay with it. I'd have been okay with it. Oh. I would have been totally fine with it. Yeah, so fine. now we know that we're so Loki dies, Heimdall dies, um, Vision, uh, Vision dies, dies. Um, um, Scarlet Witch dies. Does she die? Yep. Yeah, she's yeah, she one she of the did. ones. Uh, Bucky dies. First. Yeah, because all, Bucky all the dies first. except for Rocket. Rocket all the Guardians and except Nebula. Rocket. Yeah, there's like Nebula's ten of them. Yeah. Um, they kill there. Black Panther. And Baca's still alive. Now we're talking about the ones that dissipated at the end because obviously they what happens is Thanos, Thanos gets the whole Nick gauntlet. Fury and Maria Hill also. Thanos gets the whole gauntlet and he wipes out half the universe and that's how the movie ends. And I think that's a bold the move. Wor- the, the two <sighs> minutes of movie that are the harshest to watch. You you think Tony Stark's going to die because you know it's, it's time. Uh, it's time for Chris Evans not to be Captain America anymore. But he said he wasn't going to be uh, Captain, Captain America one more time. Yeah. So this next adventure. He's movie, definitely in four. But he's alive. They keep Tony Stark alive. He gets stabbed in the stomach and he's alive. So to look at the film and watch all these people die with a snap of a finger. I still like in my theater it was packed. We were we were in the theater and I I only bought one ticket because I was like I'm not bringing anybody with me I want to experience it the way I want to experience it so I watched it and everyone in the theater and it was packed we were sold out it was silence just quiet when all of these people were dying and just so subtle <sighs> yeah oh my this one oh. dude at one point when it's, when Sam Wilson was dying this one dude just goes. At least we still got War Machine. <laughs> and I was like, amen. They killed so many people so quickly. They did. Now, we know that a lot of that's being it's undone. It's coming back, but, it, but the way it's done. The way, the way it was done. Dude, Peter Parker. <sighs> Peter Parker goes, I'm sorry, sir. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, Mr. Stark. I don't want to go. I don't. Oh. Dude, it was, it was and oh, so now basically what's going to happen because that end tease you mentioned where you see Maria Hill, you see Nick Fury, they dissipate too. Nick Fury, Doctor mother. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Dead. Now, Doctor Strange gave Thanos the time stone because he saw all those possible futures. And, and he only knew one. there was only one. And he, that's why he looked at Tony. He's like, it has to be this way. So he knows that giving up, giving Thanos the gauntlet is going to lead them to victory. Where do we go from here? Where do you think, what do you think is going to, obviously, because of that little tease with Nick Fury at the end, Captain Marvel's coming. Now, before, Infin- before Avengers 4, we have Ant-Man and Wasp, which I think will probably take place before mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah, it has and to. Maybe even it end, has to. Maybe even end with like yeah. some people around him dissipating or whatever. Um, no Ant-Man and Hawkman, or yeah. Hawkeye in this movie. No Hawkman. Can't no Hawkman. Yeah, no, no, Still no Hawkman. Hawk in another universe. universe. Exactly. Um, so, and then we have the Captain Marvel movie that's going to be set in the 90s mm-hmm. to introduce that character so that when she shows up in Avengers 4, we all know who she is and, and, and she's ready to go. Um, so obviously the surviving Avengers are going to go. Thanos is going to do something. I think Thanos is going to start regretting his decision yeah. to kill Gamora. He may even bring back Gamora. If he brought back Gamora, would that negate his deal, his sacrifice to even to get, get the, the Soul Stone, Stone to begin with? Is Nebula going to be involved? Because in the comic books, she's the one that stole yeah, the gauntlet from him. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of ways it can go, and a lot. I think everybody that turned to dust, they're they're coming back. Yeah. But everybody else that actually died in this movie, Heimdall, Loki, those guys, yeah. I think... They're dead. I think they're done. It's um, over. And I do think one of the big three is leaving in the next movie. Yeah. And I just realized in this movie that I'm not ready to let go of any of them. Not at all. At not all. at all. No. Not even minor characters. No. Like no. They it's better... Too rough. You better not kill anybody else, guys. I promise it's too you. too much. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Kids will be crying in this movie. Kids will be crying. Anything else that sticks out to you guys you want to mention? Before we get to the rating? Oh, I know we thought long and thing. hard about Wolverine it. wasn't in this movie. Yeah, Wolverine What's wasn't. What's up with that? All right, let's do the rating. We do five you digs. It's a possible five you digs here at PCP Movie Monday. Um, this has been so fun. It's going to be interesting to go back and look at where we all rank. We may do like a graph or something. We have to. Based on our rankings of our own individual top fives and in, in a collective top five. That would make sense. We may do something like that. But let's rank this movie. Avengers Infinity War. 
Jelani, out of five possible you digs, what do you give it? Can I give it a 20? No, five's the most. Five. Five you digs. Uh, five. Perfect score. Perfect score. Why five? Why so high? Because it needs to be more. Because <laughs> <laughs> it met all my expectations. The hype was generally balanced. It was a good enough hype for me to want to go see it to begin with. So I, I, w- I went in, no holds barred. I was completely satisfied. And it, actually, you exceeded my expectations. Disney, you have you've created, you well, you helped create Marvel, make it actually look like a comic book on screen. Yeah. So I give it. I would give it five. I love I mean, it. It's just. I love exactly what you said earlier. How it was like the Ultimates it, comic book come to life. It's it come was to big. Life. It was epic. It, it was, was all over it was the a place. Crossover on film. Yeah. And you and you see it and you. Feel all these stories that you've watched for like 10 years. Some people grew up with these characters. Already. And you you make them right. Marvel didn't even own their property. And turned and, and made a right a good decision with Disney. And how Disney has funded and made this what it needs to be. Because Marvel is up on a, uh, on a pillar. Yeah. I really, I, I want to look at this like five or six years from now and see how I feel <laughs> Yeah, if I feel the same way. And I want to look at it five or six hours from now again. Yeah. I was I immediately to ready to watch this movie again. I couldn't wait. The movie stuck with me this the entire I'm still day. still thinking about it. The entire day. I watched it that whole night, the whole next day. Still thinking about it, guys. Still thinking about it. Five you digs. Five you digs. Very high score. Very high score. Love it, man. Brooks, out of five possible you digs, what do you rank Infinity War? I have to give it a five as well. A five as well. This is like the first Avengers movie, but like times ten. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And it it works. It works so well. It's just it's just a really fun movie watching experience. I can't wait for it to come out on DVD and Blu-ray. So I can just watch it whenever I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. Five and five. So what what am I going to rank it? I kind of feel bad, guys. I'm going to give it four and a half. Mm, Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. You lie. Four and a half. I'm serious. I'm going to give it four and a half you did. I think it's really, really good. I think it's amazing. But. I think it's a great film. Um. What, man? Nothing. There's no problem with it. I don't think it's five... I'm just, I'm just saying, it's a great movie. And it's something I've. You know what? You're right. This could have been a perfect score. I'm giving it a five. <laughs> All that was five, just. Five, man. Bluster. I'm giving it a five, of course, man. I was just talking about how this movie has stuck with me for days, oh. man. Like weeks, even. I immediately want to watch it again. I love it. Yeah, I just. Watch I think it it's so great. It's a great culmination. Now, the movie doesn't stand on its own if you've never really seen anything. You're not going to yeah, get as no, much no, of an no, emotion no, 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 no. any more uh, these movies. This is your payoff if, if you stuck with yeah. it. If yeah, but this is a payoff. Like no, a payoff. Most franchises can't go beyond four movies yeah. before they just lose it and jump the shark. <laughs> we, this is, movie, this is film 18 yeah. in 10 years. And dudes, th- I think where we're at right now, phase three is the best. Yeah, mm. it's the Phase best. one is great, but it's 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 Marvel's start. Yeah. It's young, it's still young. Mm. Phase two, some growing pains. That's the adolescent. Marvel but, Cinematic Universe, some grown ass people now. Seriously. Yeah. This is mature filmmaking. It's epic popcorn filmmaking, but it's got heart, it's got humor, it's got adventure. The MCU is something else. Oh and I'm so glad that we guys that you've been with us on this journey, yeah. this MCU rewatch. We have had so much fun doing it. Yeah. And now we're done with Movie Monday. It's over. So we will not be here next week. But we are coming back, so stay tuned because in June, we are back. Jelani, Robbie, Brooks, we, Movie Monday, Action Fest. Be here in June. Be, hey, pay we attention. Rise from the ashes. We'll be talking oh, yeah. about Lethal Weapon in June. Um, we'll be doing some action movies for the summertime. Yeah. It's a good time to get some uh, explosions, kick explosions yeah. going on. But yeah, we're looking forward to you guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching the series. We've had so much fun, yeah. guys. Right? Has this not yeah, been... Yeah, this has been great. I rate this whole experience of doing the MCU Rewatch Movie Monday five you digs. Oh! Don't you? Yeah. Don't you? Five you digs. Four and a half. Four and a half. <laughs> anyway, what do you rank 
Infinity War, what do you love about it? What do you hate about it? Hopefully nothing, because this movie is fantastic in our eyes. Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much. Um, like I said, be here in June when we do Lethal Weapon on Action Fest. Don't forget about the weekly comic book review, live streams, pop culture wrap-ups, blogs, podcasts, all that and more can be found at popculturephilosophers.com. Thank you guys for everything. I've been Rockin' Robin Billups. This is... Delaney Bullock. And this is... Brooks. Signing out for the MCU. You dig?